Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about my first trimester recap. In this video, I'm gonna go over exactly how my first trimester went, as far as symptoms, prenatal doctor appointments, and answering some questions that you guys had for me. I asked on IG if you guys have any questions pertaining to the first trimester, so I'm gonna go ahead and address those. Also, any product recommendations that had helped me get through that first trimester. I also wanna thank you guys for all the sweet comments you left in our last video. It meant a lot. Thank you for all of the positive words and just good vibes sent our way. It was so exciting to finally release that video and to talk more about how it was with our experience telling our parents about the pregnancy and sharing the moment when I found out, sharing that moment with Danny, it was so sweet. And I'm really glad I got to document that because I'll have those memories forever. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for all of the sweet comments. So let's go ahead and jump right into this video. If I ever sound out of breath in the, these videos, just know that it is all a pregnancy, which I'll talk about in these notes. And I did have to take notes because Trimesters are approximately 14 weeks long, I believe, so it gets a little um, crazy when they go by. I feel like it happens so fast, but there's so much that can happen within those weeks, so I wanted to make sure I wrote everything down and had it all organized so I'm not all over the place. So one of the questions that I got the most and just the best way to start off this video is symptoms. How did I know I was pregnant? What was I feeling? How could I describe that? What were the first things that I noticed? So as far as symptoms go, I personally didn't have any symptoms that tipped me off. I kind of addressed it in the last video, but to go a little bit more in depth, um, I didn't have anything that made me feel like, whoa, something's wrong. I didn't really even feel off. The best way that I could describe why I took a pregnancy test and what made me believe that it was a pregnancy was just the fact that I felt different and I don't know how to really explain it. Um, if we wanted to talk about physical symptoms, the most I can say is that I did have sore breasts, but from what I understand, some women experience sore breasts with pregnancy symptoms as far as it being so extremely painful that even just having like water hit you in the shower can just be excruciating. My breasts weren't that sore. They honestly just felt like sore when I'm gonna start my period. So that's also why I was kind of not wanting to really look into it too much or believe too much into it or let my mind race because I also thought, well, it could just be my period that is coming up. Um, so really, I don't even like to say that my breasts were that sore because it's nothing that I've experienced before. In fact, I will say that I think my breasts have been more tender and sore in past menstrual cycles than this time around. Um, another big thing too, and I don't know if this is TMI, and I'll go into this more once I make the video about our journey um, to conceive because I did want to go into depth with that. But I will just say this, and again, TMI, so if you're not like comfortable with like personal details. Um, the last time that we had had sex and it was a time where I was marking my ovulation, I had a positive LH test strip, my cervical mucus was like on point, it had that perfect like egg white consistency. And I just remember after that time, I was like, I think this was it, like I think this <laughs> was the deed that's gonna do it um, and I don't know it just kind of stuck with me in the back of my mind and as those weeks passed leading up to my first missed period which I was expecting but keeping an eye out for I just felt like it worked it's just a weird feeling I don't know how to describe it I just felt different and when I say different I don't mean anything in a bad way because I you know a lot of people feel like they feel sick or something like that and that's what tips them off but for me I just felt like there was something happening inside of me and I don't know, it was just the weirdest thing. So once I had that positive pregnancy test, I just right away scheduled my first prenatal appointment, literally just days after my first positive um, at home pregnancy test. So I did get asked about my OBGYN, how I chose her, what are my thoughts, how do I feel about the clinic that I'm going to, so on and so forth. 
So as of right now, and I think this is how it's going to stay for the rest of the duration of my pregnancy, my doctor is Dr. Limas. Um, she does have her practice here in McAllen. It is called Born Again. And I did not pick her or the practice on a whim. As soon as we decided that it was time to start trying and really get serious about this, I definitely started doing my research about OBGYNs, hospitals, just trying to get as many reviews as I can. I did not have a regular OB before getting pregnant. I just went to my family doctor um, if I needed to, but I hardly ever needed to go to the doctor anyway. So um, my research did consist of several things. It consisted of one location. I wanted my OB as long as they were, you know, come with good recommendations and reviews. I wanted them to be preferably nearby. I knew I wanted a woman. I also knew that I wanted someone that wasn't too, how do I word this? I didn't want someone that had been in the game for a long time, although there are, of course, a lot of benefits to that. Obviously, you have someone with a lot of experience. I wanted someone that was maybe a little bit more up to date and what I would consider a more modern doctor. Um, I didn't want anyone that had any old school beliefs about pregnancy or childbirth. I wanted someone who was going to be a little bit more open minded, a little bit more up to date about the current practices and what is relevant in today's pregnancy and birth related topics. So. Um, I definitely kind of looked at ages, looked at how long they've been in practice for, what they kind of believe in their philosophies. And also another big one that sometimes you just can't get around is insurance, as long as my insurance was also accepted there, and the hospital privileges that my OB was going to have. So that's how I came to determine choosing her as my OB. And I can honestly say so far it has been smooth sailing, I don't have any complaints. Um, but a lot of it does have to come, I would say, from the patient end too. As much as I trust my OB, I definitely have learned throughout this whole experience that you need to really, really speak up and advocate for yourself, even in the very first prenatal visits and just through the rest of the continuation of your pregnancy, which I'll talk about more in a minute. So. Um, finding my OB done when scheduled my first prenatal visit and to be honest it really wasn't that eventful I was so early on I was only four weeks they even did a vaginal ultrasound and <laughs> it was just so early that you really couldn't see anything about that. Okay. yeah so like I told you very early so we don't have anything yet okay okay it's nothing bad it's just just early very early But she reassured me that through my urine test and everything, um, and they did do blood work, that you know I was in fact pregnant, and then they would have all the results of my blood work for my next scheduled appointment. So during this time, it's so early on, but the first things that I did once I found out I was pregnant was one, schedule that appointment, two, up my nutrition and macros, and three, um, just get the ball rolling on research and what I was going to need during this first trimester. So one of the things that I can already recommend as a must-have product are prenatals, which you're gonna need regardless. But I actually did start taking prenatals probably like a whole year in advance. I actually did think as soon as we decided that we were gonna start trying, I had bought prenatals. And at first I started off with prenatal gummies. Then I started doing a little bit more research and I came across this brand and these are the prenatals that I have stuck with since before conceiving and now during my pregnancy. So these prenatals are from a brand called Ritual and this brand is known for just creating vitamins, multi, you know, daily vitamins for men and women or of course certain age groups. But what I really like about them, one, is that they're very 
non-GMO, vegan, friendly, eco-friendly. So I really like that. And then two, they are a subscription-based service. So once I looked into what their prenatals contain, I made sure that they had what I was looking for. I was like also sold on the fact that I did not have to go to the store every month to go buy my prenatals. I just would have them shipped to my house and it's been so easy and convenient. Also, I don't know about you guys, but throughout growing up, all I've heard about pregnancy and your prenatals is that you're gonna have to swallow these awful horse pills. So I was like, okay, I mean, if that's what I have to do, then I'll do it. But finding these and of course, modern technology, we have of course the gummies like that you can take if that's your route or these that are capsules and they have a lemon scent and taste. They are very refreshing and they are easy to swallow. As you guys can see, they are not huge at all. And then they have a capsule within the capsule. So that way it's a slow release capsule and you don't get that bad aftertaste or fishy taste or you're burping it up or anything like that throughout the day. So if y'all wanna look into these, I highly, highly, highly recommend the Ritual Essential for Women Prenatal Vitamins. Um, and yeah, I take them every night. That's the time that I prefer because I just know, hey, right before bed, pop your prenatals. So now moving into past the four week period, I can honestly say for the first six weeks, I did not feel any different. I felt great. Um, I just knew I was pregnant, so that had me on the high. Now. Getting into weeks six through nine was when I would consider those my toughest weeks. And you guys, I don't even like describing those weeks as my tough weeks because what I experienced and the symptoms that I had were so minor compared to symptoms that I know other women go through um, that I feel silly even complaining about them. But just to let you know what I did experience, I mean, it was something that's different from my everyday life and, you know, just, I guess, worth noting. But to be honest, like I said, they were very, very mild. So literally on week six, day one is when I had my first wave of, I don't want to say nausea because I wasn't nauseous. I never threw up during my first trimester at all. Um, the best I can describe it was queasiness just on this day. And I guess I just had a surge in hormones. My hormones were starting to go up, which is what kind of threw off my feeling. But I remember I woke up, was feeling okay, had a client, I think I had a couple clients in the morning, ate lunch, and then after eating lunch was when I started to slowly feel like, oof, I do not feel good. The best way I can describe it was like almost as if you were coming down with like a stomach bug. Um, and I was just kind of like, I don't feel good. I just wanted to lie down and that's it because I wasn't hungry, nothing sounded appetizing and I just felt bleh. Um, so I powered through my afternoon appointments and I remember we were supposed to um, meet up with my in-laws for a dinner and I just remember telling Danny that I can't do it. And at this point, um, they knew I was pregnant, so they totally knew that you know I had the excuse of like not feeling well. And my dad also just so happened to want to do something that evening too with us. And when I told him that I just did not feel good, my dad actually didn't believe me. He was like, "Oh, do you just you know not want to come over or whatever?" And later on, I was like, "No, dad, I literally was like down for the count." Um, so I do have vlog clips of that to kind of show you guys exactly what I was experiencing that day. I know I'm wanting to document everything. Yesterday was officially start of week six. And so far I haven't had any nausea or anything like that. And then today, just after lunch, um, something kicked in. Didn't throw up, I don't feel like throwing up. My stomach is really hurt. Um, just an uncomfortable, uneasy stomach feeling. Nothing that, you know, if you've ever ate something bad or just been a little unwell, you have not experienced it before. It's tolerable, but basically just want to lay down and take it easy. So, 
Memorial Day, we're supposed to go have a little family cookout, but I just couldn't hack it. So I already want to risk it and being like a Debbie John and all this early. So I had Danny go by himself and he's also gonna bring me back some stuff to hopefully help. Looking that ginger helps a lot. So getting some ginger root and ginger tea. Hopefully easy and easiness to him, but I'm just hoping this is not last long because I'm not someone to get to so I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be how I'm feeling for the next couple of weeks. To be honest, I really, really, really mentally prepared myself prior to getting pregnant that, okay, you could have a very hard pregnancy. You could have a very hard first trimester. So in my mind leading up to getting pregnant, I had always just started to mentally prepare myself for the worst of the worst. You know, I was like, you could be vomiting all the time. You could just not feel good. It happens and it's common. And just because I didn't experience that in this pregnancy so far, that could not be the case for future pregnancies. I don't know. Um, but once I kind of had that day where I was feeling off, I was just already mentally preparing myself for maybe this is gonna be a regular thing for the duration of either my first trimester or pregnancy. So I was already kind of getting like a game plan situated. But the next day I did feel better and then the weeks after that I did feel better. The only thing that was just really a inconvenience was I did experience a lot of indigestion and heartburn. So during the first trimester I really really had to stay away from spicy foods and from like fast foods. It was just they were gonna really upset my stomach in the sense of like bloating and indigestion like I would be constantly burping up just gas and I hated it because that constant feeling of it coming up is what made me not feel hot <laughs> and that's what made me feel kind of ugh, like gross um, so I knew if I stayed away from those foods I would be okay also, a really big tip and just kind of what helped me get through the day was eating small but frequent meals. Um, I had to keep it small, I tried to keep them bland, and I tried to just eat even when I really wasn't feeling food at the moment, but it was a weird thing, like you feel sick if you don't eat, and then the only time I really felt like normal was when I was eating, but then as soon as I was done eating, I just kind of had to deal with like feeling a little bloated. It was just a weird thing, but Eating and drinking a lot of water really helped my energy levels and just helped me stay afloat through those weeks six through nine. Now, product recommendations that I can recommend for mild nausea and queasiness because like I said, mine definitely wasn't on a level of extremeness or to the point where I felt like, oh my gosh, like I am really, really suffering here are a few products that I can recommend. So on the day that that feeling kind of first hit, I had Danny go to the grocery store and pick me up a couple of things. One of them was going to be just ginger root because I wanted to just make ginger root tea. I knew that kind of already helped with nausea, so I was like, okay, definitely get me that with some lemon. And then also just in case, for some reason they didn't have ginger root, which I don't know why I thought they wouldn't. And also just for convenience for later days, I asked him to pick me up some um, ginger tea, like ready to go tea bags. So I don't have ginger root with me because I don't need it anymore, but I still have the ginger tea. And we just got um, an HB brand, it's hibiscus ginger orange. So I like that it had the ginger and that it had citrus because citrus actually helped me a lot too. So this is the one that I would use. And I just kind of started drinking a cup of this throughout the day, sometimes in the morning after dinner if I didn't want to go through like chopping up the ginger root and making my own tea. So when I did have the time to do that or I felt like an actual stronger ginger taste was needed, I would go ahead and just chop up about an inch of ginger root, boil it in hot water, squeeze lemon, and boom, that was my tea with a little bit of honey. And it really, really does help soothe that queasiness in um, your stomach. Also, just eating lemon really helped me just even like biting onto the lemon and just snacking on that. I know it may sound weird, but just that tart citrus taste just kind of takes that ugly taste out of your mouth that kind of you get when you're queasy. So 
that's something I can also recommend. And then I had ordered early on, which thankfully they got here during that week where that queasiness kind of started, were these Ginger Rescue Ginger Tablets. So these are the ones that I got. They are off of Amazon. All these products I'll list down below in the description box. And just to show you guys exactly how like much, I really did not experience a whole lot of this queasiness. Um, I ordered only one pack because I wanted to just make sure that it would work. And out of the pack, this is all I used. I just used seven tablets that came in here. So you can tell that I obviously didn't feel the need to pop these often at all. So thankfully, and they actually did work. Um, really what they helped with was when I was working and I started to kind of feel that feeling come on. Really, it would just be like this ugly taste in my mouth and I would just kind of be like, ugh, I don't feel like great. I would just pop one of these in, suck on it, and it really just helped. And if I didn't have these for some reason, um, or if I didn't want to take these, I wanted like just something of a different flavor, chewing gum actually really helped as well too. And then as far as for bloating and heartburn, nothing but good old classic Tums. Um, which I would use regularly any, well not regularly, but you know, we would have in stock here in the house um, anyways. So I definitely like the chewy bites more. They are just a little bit easier to eat. They don't have a very chalky taste. So, and again, I still have some left over because although they were needed, I didn't have to take them constantly. And they really did help a little bit with like keeping my gas and burping down. So other than um, that kind of queasiness going on, other early symptoms that I experienced um, were the frequent peeing. I actually started that very early. So now peeing in the middle of the night, just going and making constant bathroom trips is part of my regular day-to-day -day life. So it's not that bad. Also, I am being very um, conscious about drinking a lot of water. So obviously that's gonna happen when you're intaking a lot of liquid which is fine, it's manageable, I can't really complain about it. And then something that surprised me a little bit, I was expecting it, but wasn't sure if it was gonna happen, was my breasts did start to grow right away. I wouldn't say they're anything massive right now, but I am someone who is just small chested naturally, so any type of growth in that area is like a shock to me. And I noticed it, one, because obviously they looked cooler, but two, I did start to notice some very light, mild stretch marks on them so then i was like wow i was not expecting to see any type of stretch marks that fast um but i was able to go ahead and order some stuff to help with that and of course it came in right away so really all i can recommend to help with that and i can't take credit for this because i got this from desi's um desi perkins product must have videos for her first trimester so really all i'm using are natural oils and just a basic lotion so i went ahead and ordered vitamin E oil off of Amazon. This is from Sky Organics. I've actually used this brand before, so I actually really like them and I trust them. And I just do a few pumps of this into the Gold Bond um, healing lotion, and I'll just lather this up every night, sometimes even in the morning, um, on my breasts, my stomach, my thighs. And if I'm feeling extra, I also took the tip from her and I ordered some sweet almond oil. And if I just really wanna just be this big ball of slippery oil mess, I'll just go ahead and lather this on too. And then another thing that I ordered just to have on hand, even though I really didn't experience um, any type of restless leg syndrome too much during the first trimester, um, but I would get it at some times and it just felt great. And I kind of had some like back pain um, but it was very mild, but what helped was this magnesium cream. And so now I actually just put it on every night as well, especially on my butt because during now the second trimester, which we'll get into in that video, but I am experiencing, well, I did experience a lot of sciatic nerve pain, um, but it actually kind of has subsided now that I think about it. But that transition between first and second trimester, that's kind of what I experienced and the magnesium cream really helped and this one is also off of Amazon. And then another symptom which has been really funny because I remember just one night Danny was like, is baby sucking the life out of you? But I just sleep a lot more. So that is what I do not complain about because it is great and I am taking advantage of that as much as I can now before those sleepless nights come around. Um, so yeah, I just sometimes will be down for a nap right after dinner 
and I'm out for like, I'm not talking some small 30 minute, one hour nap. I am out for at least two to three hours and it doesn't even disturb my sleep because I'll get up, shower, maybe eat something and then go to bed. <laughs> so, and I'll sleep throughout the night of, you know, of course I get up to go pee and stuff, but I definitely have my full night's rest as well. So during that time where like the drowsiness and sleepiness started to happen, um, I would actually just kind of lie down on my massage bed that I have here in between clients and I would just kind of recharge in that way. So um, I definitely would just listen to my body whenever I needed to just like, okay, you need to like kind of just close your eyes for a few minutes or just relax. And that's what I would do. So um, again, just more sleep and I can't complain. And now during week six was when I had my second prenatal visit and this one was a lot more eventful because we finally got to see something on that screen and it was the little bean of an embryo. <laughs> relax, relax, relax. Sorry about that, honey. Oh, what a change. Congratulations, Mama. Thank you. My boy had to get to the heartbeat. Yay. Wow. What a change, huh? Yeah. So this is your uterus. Bubbles that we usually do, remember? Mm -hmm. From where they come out. Congratulations, honey! Thank you. Happy? Just got back from the doctor, and oh my god, what a change these past two weeks have made. Um, last time I went in, I was just about four weeks. I mean, I literally went in, we found out, and um, still really early on, couldn't see anything. But this time around, we finally got to see the sack. We heard the heartbeat and I'm saying we even though Danny was unfortunately not able to be in there with me just because of and all with coronavirus you know regulations it's okay but I'm saying we because they're in spirit and I recorded everything and you know every he's still in this journey with me even though he can't physically be in the room with me but um, it was great I I'm on cloud nine I I was a little worried I just wanted to get to this appointment just to see something and hear good news and so far doctor said everything is looking so yeah everything is looking good I'm so excited and it's amazing I I'm on cloud nine I like I said I'm just I'm a ball of emotions too um but yeah so hopefully everything used to go good and mama's hungry so I need to eat something but this was great this made my day and along with that one is when we got to finally hear a heartbeat for the first time and that amazed me because to just think that you have this tiny little seed looking thing but yet it already has the heartbeat just blew my mind and yeah that was great um, I know it's very common to have cramping or maybe some light spotting during the first few weeks of pregnancy um, it's just due to implementation bleeding, meaning that your embryo is just implementing itself onto the uterus. So it's very common to experience that, but I honestly did not have any cramping or light bleeding whatsoever. So I have nothing really to say about that. But the doctor did assure me that if that did happen, um, it's totally normal. <laughs> During this time, obviously before I knew I was pregnant and um, continuing on throughout my first trimester, uh, I still did continue to stay active. I still went to the gym regularly. Well, actually the gyms were closed at a certain time. So I was just doing my at-home workouts and then they did open up um, at some time during my first trimester. So I did start to go back regularly and not much has changed with my fitness routine as far as working out in general. 
I will make a whole other video about my health and fitness regimen for pregnancy just to go more in depth into that. But other than that, I just continue to stay active. I will just say right now, definitely upped my calories to help support the pregnancy and I definitely just hitting PRs in the gym were just no longer a thing. But again, I just remain to continue to stay active at the gym, but that'll be more in depth in that other video. It was a little hard at times to go to the gym. One, just because uh, those weeks six through nine, I was not feeling too hot. Two, we did travel during that time. So um, so I didn't have access to a gym. The gyms at the hotels were closed. Um, and then, yeah, I just, you know, wasn't feeling too hot some days. So I just really didn't feel like going to the gym. But one thing that we did do, and we just kind of started during um, the beginning of the quarantine, was taking walks after dinner daily. And really it's for Wesley and also just for us to like kind of move a little bit. And as much as sometimes I did not want to go on that walk because I just wanted to lay down, I knew I had to because if I had just finished eating and I laid down, that was like not good for me because my food would just sit there and I would feel it kind of like in the back of my throat. Um, so, but I was tired. <laughs> so Danny would just kind of tell me like, come on, let's just go. Like it's a 10 minute walk and I'm like, okay, fine. So I definitely just made sure to get those walks in. And also if I knew I wasn't gonna go to the gym that day, I just made sure to get my steps in, make sure I was moving when I had the energy to move. You know, whether just be doing stuff around the house, nothing crazy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I dealt with staying active during the first trimester. But as you guys have seen, because if you follow me on Instagram, you do know that I definitely would still try to make it to the gym at least three times a week, if not two, which was still okay. And then making sure I was moving on my active rest days, if you want to call them. So then I had my third prenatal doctor visit at nine weeks. And again, everything was still pretty routine. Um, the baby had grown a bit and now it looked like this little weird thing. It kind of had shape and yeah, but doctor reassured me that everything was growing great. Uh, heartbeat sounded good. She always checked in with me to see how I was feeling. And you know, it just, I felt good other than just being what, you know, a little tired. Um, but that was it. But I'd be happy no matter what. Little bean right there. Little peanut. <laughs> there you go. I'm not gonna rub it there. Awesome. And around nine weeks, I can honestly say like towards the end, going into like the 10th and 11th week was when I really started to feel back to somewhat normal. I still had to be careful with what I was eating, but I definitely was no longer feeling the need for the ginger stuff. Um, everything was just going really good. One thing I did experience early on in the pregnancy and I, try, and I was proactive about making sure I could do everything I can to help with it, and I'm very proud to say I overcame it, <laughs> was um, constipation. It's very common during pregnancy and some people suffer from it throughout their whole entire pregnancy. As of right now, I am like praising hallelujah that I got that in check. <laughs> so to help combat the constipation, I made sure to just be drinking the water that I needed to be drinking and then making sure to be eating fiber rich foods. And if I was lacking in fiber, I would take just good old Metamucil sometimes once a day, maybe once every other day. Um, I didn't want to have to rely on Metamucil too much. I really wanted to make sure I was eating the fiber. So I eat a lot of oats these days, a lot of chia seeds, drink a lot of water, eat my greens that are fibrous. Um, so cucumbers and stuff like that really helped me go. And yeah, I am proud to say that I am still regular and I'm not suffering because that constipation feeling really also doesn't help with that you know, uneasy stomach feeling. At this point, still I wasn't showing, but I definitely just felt a little bit more bloated, which could be just from a number of things. One, obviously the pregnancy and the hormones, 
Two, I was now eating more than what I was prior to finding out I was pregnant because I upped my food intake. So just all of that. So definitely was still able to wear a lot of my old clothing. Um, didn't really have to make much adjustments. But once I started to get past week 10 is when I started to notice that things were feeling a little bit tighter around my lower Another back. file you won't see until a few weeks, but this, I'm cheating. I am full blown. It is week 11 and this bump is starting maybe barely. I think I can still pass it off as like a, what do you call it? Just like lower belly, you know, crotch. But I was not about to try to like squeeze into this bodysuit and jeans. Jeans are like the worst thing right now. I tried to just wear dresses, um, like biker shorts, anything that had stretch to it. And if I could wear jeans, I would just leave the button unbuttoned and just zip it up as much as I could and just wore a shirt that was like long enough to cover it. And that's just kind of how I got by. But I definitely didn't have a bump. Um, Danny and I kept kind of waiting to see like, okay, when are we gonna start to see a little something? Um, because that's always exciting. At least I just could not wait to start showing. So I was like always checking, you know, myself in the mirror, taking pictures weekly, like, okay, when am I gonna notice a bump? So during my fourth, prenatal visit it was already 12 weeks and this was the visit that I was looking forward to because this is going to kind of mark the end of my first trimester really the end is at the end of your 13th week but this was going to be my last prenatal visit within my first trimester so this was going to just again reassure me that baby was go like doing okay I was doing okay the doctor didn't notice anything wrong and thankfully it all went very smooth Sorry, you look like a real baby, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's what? So there's a So, so over here is a baby's head. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Kind of like laying, I right? see it, yes. Yeah. And here. Somewhere there is a there, There's leg. a leg, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. as far as like anatomy goes right there. yeah mm -hmm. it definitely looks better than the last few times you know, yeah but like now you can really yeah start to see there we go everything went fine she reassured me everything was good reassured me we would probably be able to see the sex of the baby um in the next visit and i was just over the moon happy that okay now we can start prepping for how we wanted to announce to extended family and friends, how I wanted to announce on Instagram and to all of you guys. And I was just thankful because I was like, okay, clothes are getting a little tighter. I'm just like ready to not have to like feel I was picking weird outfit choices. Now I had a reason why I kept wearing like stretchy things. Um, because if you noticed, I definitely wasn't wearing jeans at this point and it was just kind of like, okay. But yeah, anyways, so once um that appointment gave me the go and at that point too my doctor just kind of realized because she always would ask me you know how are you feeling any questions anything and i will say this is very important i did get asked this in my um questionnaire on instagram was you know how are the appointments are they rushed and this and that and honestly for me from what i'm experiencing with her they're not rushed. There have been a few times where I've gone and they do seem very busy. And you can just feel that because your wait time is a little, little longer. But definitely, I mean, every time I've gone, I've gotten a sonogram, which I'm really thankful for because I've learned that some places in the country throughout this pandemic, um, not everyone is being given sonograms regularly. They are only doing them every so often, which that would kind of make me anxious. So I'm very thankful that so far I've been able to see the baby every time I go in for um, an appointment. 
And even if I had to wait a little bit longer to see the doctor, she always made sure to come in, address, you know, anything she needed to address with me. And she would ask me, you know, is there any questions? So I will say I am someone that is not very, I don't like to come off as being demanding. So you like if had it not been for something as important as a pregnancy, I'd probably just be like, nope, I'm good. Um, because technically I am good. I mean, I haven't had anything that has raised cause for concern at this point in my pregnancy. But I, if I did have anything on my mind, I had any questions, I made sure to write them down in my notes on my phone. So when she asked, if I couldn't remember, I knew I had something to pull it up. And, you know, I wouldn't want to come across as being very assertive, but definitely like, yeah, you know what, I do have this question. So really one of the biggest things I had to just kind of like ask just for my own peace of mind and everything, towards the end of the last trimester going into the second, I started to experience round ligament pain, which is just normal, but I just wanted to make sure and clear it with her that what I was feeling was normal. And for her to tell me what should I be looking out for as far as pain wise, that isn't normal that I would need to call her or, you know, maybe it's an emergency. So she did explain to me the types of pains that I should be feeling that are completely normal. And, you know, she did explain to me like what isn't normal. So that gave me a lot of peace of mind and reassurance and asked her about when I could more or less find out the sex, that way we could start planning for the gender reveal and everything. And yeah, so sometimes if we're very timid people or if we are very just, we don't want to like cause a scene, I'm like that. I can honestly say I am like that. It's very hard for us to take the opportunities to speak up, but during something like this, you definitely need to just take those opportunities. If your doctor is rushing you and doesn't ask you how you're feeling or if you have any questions, that's a big problem and I would not recommend staying with an OB like that. But if your doctor, you know, even if the office seems busy, but she does still ask you if you have any questions, any concerns, that is your window of opportunity where you need to now say, yeah, I do. And even though I know I'm going to take more of your time, I want to extend this conversation because I do have concerns that I want to just go over with you. That is their job and that is your role also as being someone who's advocating for themselves thoroughly because you don't want to just be second guessing yourself at any time throughout your pregnancy because you're not going to have any peace of mind. At least that's how I see it. So I had to really just get over that, you know, personality trait that I have where I don't like to seem like I'm being demanding or something and just, you know, take those opportunities. So with that being said, with that being my last prenatal um, visit during my first trimester, we started getting everything ready for our announcement and we already had ideas going on about how we wanted to announce, how we wanted the pictures to look, and we just had a little at-home photo shoot. We did it ourselves, just self-timer on my camera <laughs> and did our best. We knew we wanted Wesley to be involved and I got him that cute little shirt off of um, Etsy. I'll link it down below in case you guys wanna order some for yourself. And I'm so happy with those pictures. I'm glad we, we get to keep those, you know, also for memories. And it just felt so good to finally announce this to everyone. I felt like I could finally bask in the happiness and just start talking about everything because obviously I do like to share parts of my life online and this is such a huge chapter in our lives that I just have so much that I wanna share, so much that I wanna connect with um, other moms about and it's been so good to like talk to you guys who are also pregnant for the first time, talk to you guys who have had already multiple children, having you guys open up to me about maybe hard times that you've experienced through your journey to conception. And I have been so thankful for each and every one of you that have reached out and it's been just such a nice experience to just connect with other women. Um, so yeah, that kind of wraps up my first trimester experiences and symptoms. I do have a couple other product recommendations that really didn't fit anywhere in the video, but I definitely want to just recommend them to you guys and give a suggestion. So one of those, this is something to be honest, I don't know where, I, I know I read it off of somewhere, I don't know if it was off of the apps that I'm using, which I'll go over to in a minute, um, but I saw this and I thought I, that's such a good idea and I really liked it. So I read somewhere that it can be a cute idea and just something good for you to keep, to have, so you can look back on later on or for you know your baby to be able to read later on. But I saw that you can get a journal 
and you just kind of keep this as a personal diary throughout your pregnancy and you can also write notes and letters to your baby so that's kind of what I started doing um, so I do have a few journal entries in here and yeah we are just well I am writing letters to baby during this journey and maybe one day they'll get to read it and it'll just be like a nice thing that I can give to them at some point okay next product I'm gonna say this right now you don't necessarily need it in your first trimester but I am so in love with this product that even if you're not pregnant just get it let me get it so I'm saying right now everyone whether you're pregnant or not you need a body pillow or pregnancy pillow this thing is the most comfortable thing it is now an extension of me anytime I'm gonna lay down on the couch or in the bed this bad boy is with me I ordered that pillow like not too long ago it was definitely I think during like week 12 or 13 and when it came in I was like okay let me see if this how this goes I am in love with that thing I've told Danny this is just who I am now this is that pillow is a part of me it just makes laying down anywhere so comfortable. You can use it while you're sitting up and it just like hugs you and supports your lower back. And what I really like about that one specifically, which I was like always a little like, oh, pregnancy pillows are so big and bulky, like they're gonna get in the way, they're gonna be like, you know, getting in Danny's way in our bed and everything. Well, this pregnancy pillow, one half of it, you can actually detach, it has a zipper and you can take it off so that way it can be less bulky and in case you don't need it. But since you can detach it, it's also a little bit more flexible. So like that arm, you can actually like move over. If you're like sitting up, you can move it over your lap and you can use it to like prop up your food or your laptop or anything. So it makes sitting down even comfortable too. Um, so I love it that it's versatile. That one's off of Amazon. I'll link it down below. Just a heads up, if you are gonna order it, when you get it, you're gonna be like, what the hell is this? This is not what I ordered. When you get it, it looks very flat. It does not look fluffy at all. Danny was like, you got scammed. Like that is not how it looks in the picture. But it does come with a note card that says, give it 48 hours. In 48 hours, it's gonna like rise to its fluffiness. And it surely did. So just FYI, in case you order that one and you're like, you liar. No, it will rise. Just give it a couple days. <laughs> And as far as apps that I have been using throughout this pregnancy, there are so many apps that you can use to help track your weekly progress and weekly updates about baby and how they're developing. The one that I just liked the most was the Bump app. And um, it is also, I believe, from the makers of The Knot. So I think it's really cute. But it is these, these. It is this one down here at the corner. I really like it. I like that it gives me updates weekly and it's just your typical app. It shows you like the 3D image of baby, like how they should be developing, 3D image of your body and what's going on, size of baby, what to be experiencing during that time. It gives me weekly checklists of what I should be doing during this time, like as far as getting prepared, you know, for baby, for other prenatal visits, etc. It's really helpful. And then another app that I'm using, which is in conjunction with how we conceive, which again, I'll go more into detail about the app later on, but it's called Thermometer app. And it came with the um, body temperature thermometer that I was using to track my ovulation. Again, I'll go into that more in depth later on. But what I use this app for, not only does it also give you developmental progress on baby week by week, actually it even does daily. But what I use this one for is to track my um, weight gain throughout pregnancy to make sure I am gaining the appropriate amount of weight throughout this pregnancy. So that's what mainly I use this app for now. Then other questions that I got were um, any cravings. Honestly, you guys, I have not had any major cravings. I do find myself eating fruit more. I've always loved fruit, but now I just make it even more of a point to buy fruit at the grocery store and I'll try to like buy something different every time we go. So just something that's like cold and juicy is just like really hits the spot for me. Um, but like I haven't had any intense cravings. I know there's some women who crave very bizarre food combinations or things. Um, and there's some women who crave things so bad that if they don't get it, they will literally have an emotional breakdown. 
because they just need it and want it that bad. I have not experienced any of that. Um, I'm just really, yeah, eating like normal. But like I said, fruit is like a little bit more enjoyable for me nowadays, but that's about it. And I haven't had any food aversions. So nothing that I've liked before, but now I don't like that hasn't happened. So I'm really glad about that. Cause I was like, oh, that's gonna be so sad to like not like something anymore. Um, but no, I haven't had any aversions either. And a last question that I was getting is mood swings, any type of mood swings. And honestly, I haven't had any mood swings. I haven't had any breakdowns emotionally. I will say I thought I was going to be a lot more emotional during the time, like during pregnancy, because I am a very emotional person when it comes to the time of the month for me, like a sad commercial. I am just like bawling. If you like raise your voice at me, I'm bawling. Um, <laughs> Surprisingly, that's not what that hasn't been happening throughout this. In fact, it's kind of been the opposite, and I find myself more annoyed at times. Like, I actually get maybe a little aggressive, and I catch myself being like, Whoa, like, where did that come from? Not snappy or anything like that. Like, I haven't even really snapped at Danny or anything, um, but like, I'll just maybe read something or I hear something, and I'm just like, like I get annoyed, like I'm like, what the hell, you know? Um, <laughs> and I don't know what that's about. So I think it's kind of funny because I thought, okay, I'm gonna be an emotional sap, but instead I've become like this tough, like, I don't wanna take any bullshit type of person. So I don't know, it's been very weird. I don't know if, what you call that or if that's even considered a mood swing, but that's just what I've noticed as far as emotions. So that basically wraps up this video um, this weekend, because I hope to get this video up basically a SAP and this coming weekend is going to be our gender reveal which I am filming about and I am vlogging so that'll be up soon as well so as of right now I don't know the sex of the baby I have a feeling of what it is and I'll just say it now I feel like it's a boy but that doesn't mean that's what I want um, either or is perfectly fine with me I just have a feeling so and Danny says girl so we're kind of like it'll be fun we're like split on what we think it is so one of us is gonna be very surprised but we will both for sure be very happy because he also doesn't have a preference so yeah um, we are in week 16 right now and that video will be up hopefully not too long after our gender reveal this weekend and like I mentioned just be tuned in for more updates and more videos surrounding this pregnancy and I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can always follow me on my socials. I'll link them down below and I'll see you guys in my next one.